Hey everyone, I'm going to start off today going over this version of the B250 AliExpress mining motherboard, the B250 BTC 12P. Uh, the name seems to be pretty consistent with the actual product, so I'm going to go with that. This is an 1151 LGA 6th or 7th gen Intel CPU based motherboard, DDR4, that has 12 physical PCI Express slots. You see it has 11 by ones and it has a single by 16 in order to actually run 12 GPUs on this board, in my experience, you do typically have to turn the PCI Express setting in the BIOS down from Gen 2 to Gen 1 and turn the integrated graphics of your CPU off if you do not have an FSKU. So, anyway, looking at the board here, you'll see that it very likely came over on the slow boat because it has a CR2032 battery pre-installed. You see it has two supplemental Molex power connectors you see that it has all solid capacitors and, of course, the layout itself for the PCI Express. I will note one thing that this board has VGA and DVI out. It does not have HDMI, which is a little bit annoying and kind of strange for a board of this uh, vintage and generation. The B75 variant, which is sold also on AliExpress with a second-gen Intel Core Series-based processor, has HDMI. And the little version that I'll cover a little bit later in another video that just has direct riser connection does have HDMI. So this board seems like kind of an oddball clone of a motherboard that was produced back in the day for 6th and 7th gen, but it does seem to work just fine with Hive OS, which is an Ubuntu-based Linux OS. I'm sure it works just fine with Windows because it's an Intel, you know, 6th, 7th gen system. I don't know if it has TPM, but you're probably not activating Windows just to mine anyway. The upside to this board, I think, is just because it does have a full by 16 slot, you could potentially use this in the future in a gaming PC build once mining is, you know, done or irrelevant. However, let's be honest, you're not buying a six-year-old platform CPU for mining right now with the intention of reselling the board later, especially at the price point, which is less than $100. So this is the physical board layout, and let's get into uh, how it's performing and my rig. Just a quick update on this B250 AliExpress 12 GPU motherboard. I did do an initial video, you can find it in the recents here, um, on this board, the initial setup, exactly what it constitutes, what CPUs it supports, kind of where you can get it, what you should pay for it. I was having issues right out of the box with this board. This has been probably the worst of the batch that I bought off of AliExpress or the like. But there's, you know, these no-name mining motherboards. Um, a lot of those issues were fixed by doing two things. One, going into the BIOS and changing PCIe Gen 2 to PCIe Gen 1 for the speed on all of these. And then the second one was getting the 12th graphics card to take, which was actually GPU 11 in the, uh, the Linux um, interface. And how I fixed that was going into the BIOS. Hey, buddy and disabling the integrated graphics in the Core i3 that I've got in here. So it worked perfectly out of the box. No issues once I did that. It saw 12 GPUs before, but it would only mine with 11. So it turns out that was essentially a PCIe resource issue. And I think you'll only see that on the version of this board that has all of the actual PCI Express slots on it. They do have a version which just has the USB ports on it. Well, they're not actually USB, but the, you know, the riser cable goes directly into it. So that is how you can solve that issue. And then uh, I'll head over to the computer real quick and I'll show you exactly how it's doing. So here you can see it, uh, GPU 0 through 11, 12 cards. Everything is, is great. It shows BTC 250 uh, OEM. The BIOS is actually, that was actually pretty uh, recent. I think that's probably flashed right at the time that I bought it. I'm guessing it's just a clone of some other name brand motherboard BIOS. Uh, the only gaps in hash rate up here are when I had power supplies die and I had the rig offline. It hasn't gone offline on its own for any stability issue ever, actually. So uh, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't work with NVIDIA cards or a mix and match of the both, but... Arguably, AMD cards are harder to run uh, with all that VRAM, so this thing has been just a trooper. Uh, as you can see, I've got 6600, 6600 XTs, 6700 XTs, 6800, 
I've got the entire range of Navi 2 cards in here, and uh, the thing is pulling like 500 mega hash or something like that, 517. So, the board's doing great, but again, if you have one of these and you're having problems, another cat, they like the heat. <laughs> if you're having problems with getting all of the, uh, the cards to register in mine, go into the BIOS and do those two changes. So, changing PCI Express Gen 2 to Gen 1, and then also disabling the integrated graphics on the Core i3. Uh, if you need a display out, you can certainly use one of the display outs on the cards, but once you get it all set up, I would recommend just not having any display connected at all. And yeah, like I said, this thing's running on a cheapo Wi-Fi adapter. All it has is power hooked into it, and I'll, I'll, I guess I'll link the Wi-Fi adapter I use and these smart plugs too. Uh, it's really nice just for keeping track of how much juice they're using, and then if there is a rig hanging that doesn't auto restart, you can just kill the power and turn it back on remotely. So. Anyway, hopefully that's helpful. I feel like I should at least follow up because there really isn't much out there on these uh, motherboards. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that was insightful.